Hi. Uh, so yeah, sorry I missed the last week. It was kind of hectic, chaotic. Uh, appreciate your understanding. Uh, I know it wasn't ideal. Uh, the plan was to get back on track this week, but then things have changed even more. Uh, we're not super sure yet uh, what it will look like moving forward. You will be taken care of, that's for sure. Uh, and we'll make sure that you get the physics education that you need. Uh, but we are still waiting to hear what that will look like. Uh, I'm just waiting for the light to boot up. Uh, I did want to talk about the difference between uniform and non-uniform fields, uh, which I know you talked about with Mr. Glandy and the subs when I was away. Uh, but I just wanted to just kind of summarize both of them uh, and hopefully maybe just answer any misconceptions that you might have. Uh, about the different ones. Now I am waiting for... It isn't ideal because also my board still crashes uh, and that becomes a problem when you're trying to record it. Okay, so non-uniform. We were kind of talking about this beforehand, but so an electric field is where a positive test charge will go. So around a positive charge, a positive test charge would go out and around a negative charge it would go towards. Uh, but non-uniform fields, we have this equation, electric field is kq over r squared. Because we have r in this equation, as the r, or the distance away from the charge changes, the electric field around it changes. Uh, so if we were to plot electric field as a function of r, we would have this inverse square relationship. If we wanted a straight line, we would need to plot 1 over r squared, and then we'd get our, our straight line. Uh, but that's a non-uniform electric field. So it's it's different at different points. If I were to take the electric field here, it would be different than the electric field here, uh, et cetera. And, and that's kind of what we were talking about before I was gone. Now, what you talked about uh, over the last week is a uniform electric field. And so we can design these by taking these parallel plates. So they're charged plates. Uh, and we put so much charge on them that the electric field between them uh, ends up being uniform. Now, that has some important implications. Uniform means it doesn't change. Uh, we have some formulas with electric field. Uh, so this electric field formula is my force over my charge. Now, if the electric field doesn't change, this equation tells us that the force doesn't change as well. So if I have something, it's going to experience the same force here as it would here, as it would here, as it would here, because that electric field uh, is uniform. So it's the same throughout. Now, something it, there are things that are not the same throughout. And so you did do a lab as well where you were looking at this relationship with electric fields, uh, where it is the change in voltage over the distance. Now, the electric field between these plates, again, is, is uniform. It's the same at every point. However, the voltage is not. If I were to draw in my power source, so usually the negative is a small size, and maybe this power source is 2 volts. If I were to split this right down the middle, so this is half my distance between the plates, the voltage at that point would be 1 volt. So it would be 1 volt uh, of voltage. If I were to take 1 quarter of my distance, now that would be 0 0.5 volts. So it would be a quarter of my total voltage. So that 2 volts is all the way across these plates. Uh, but if the distance is different, uh, the voltage will be different. But in all those situations, so if I take 0.5 volts and divide by the distance of 1 quarter, or if I were to take 1 volt and divide by the distance of 1 half, I would still get the same electric field. The electric field is uniform. Now, talking about voltage, that brings us to kind of this other relationship where voltage now gives us the ability to do work, where I can change the energy of something with a charge. Now, this E is not electric field. This is a change in energy. Uh, and a change in energy, by definition, is the ability to do work. If we do work, we change the energy of something. So there is a physics principle associated with this equation. And this is physics principle number three. Uh, so if we are using this relationship, 
it's fairly safe to say that we are using work energy theorem in order to analyze it. Now what this means is if I, I'm going to maybe draw some, I'll draw some larger parallel plates here. Well, here's a negative one. And then I'll draw a big positive one here. So this voltage between these plates can do work on something that's between them. So we have our electric field. So our electric field is uniform. It's the same throughout. Uh, but if I were to take, uh, if I were to take an electron and I were to put it up here, well, now it has potential energy uh, because it wants to move away from that negative plate and towards the positive plate. That electric, it's going to feel a force. There's going to be an electric force on that electron. The force on that electron is going to be towards the positive plate. Uh, and so it's going to start out with initially no kinetic energy and it will speed up and at the end it will have a kinetic energy of a certain amount. The energy of that electron has changed. That change in energy is what we're talking about. So as things move between those plates, we can, we can change the energy of them. They use this in like the Large Hadron Collider and these particle accelerators. They use parallel plates like this uh, to speed up electrons to like 99% the speed of light or to speed up protons to 99% the speed of light. By shooting them between these parallel plates, they're able to make them go faster and faster and faster uh, until uh, they're ready to collide them into whatever it is that they want to collide with. The other thing you would have talked about is what happens when things move maybe not just straight up and down or between these parallel plates, but they move in trajectories. So if I were to take maybe a proton and I were to launch it uh, at these parallel plates, uh, it would travel this parabolic path. Just like on Earth when we throw a ball in gravity's uniform field, uh, it travels this parabolic path as I throw it. And with this, it probably brings back some memories of how we analyze these types of questions. Where in this horizontal dimension, or the x dimension you might call it, uh, this is uniform motion. Now uniform motion, so it's uniform motion, and we can use uniform motion formulas in order to analyze it. In this vertical dimension, there's accelerated motion. Just like how things move on the Earth, gravity accelerates it down, but then it has a uniform motion in the x direction. So that's accelerated motion. And with that, we have our kinematics equations where we have things like vi. So if it's starting from here, then that's probably zero. Uh, we have accelerations. We want to find the time. Uh, and the big idea here is the time is the same in both of those components. Uh, that's kind of the big carryover from Physics 20. How this changes is maybe how we find some of these things like the acceleration. Uh, we have all of these equations. So I have this equation and I have that equation. This one tells me, so this equation here tells me that the electric force is my electric field times Q. Now another way to calculate electric force is mass times acceleration. So the mass times the acceleration of that proton is equal to the electric field times Q. So what's different in physics 30 is how we find the acceleration is we use some of these, some of these formulas, take our acceleration, throw that into that Y component, and then we can use the time for both. Now sometimes it might be different things. So electric field uh, is also equal to voltage over distance. So maybe my mass times my acceleration is equal to my voltage over my distance times my charge. Uh, and I can use some other information like voltage and distance to eventually find my acceleration. Uh, on your data sheet, there are very common charges and masses, and that's kind of why they're there. So like an alpha particle is 2E. So 1E is 1 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. 2 times that would be the charge on an alpha particle, and the mass is given there as well. Uh, so that's kind of the difference between non-uniform and uniform fields. There are definitely lots of different calculations with uniform fields. We will continue to talk about these uh, as we talk about magnetic fields uh, and as we talk about uh, particle physics and atomic stuff kind of coming up in the last unit. Uh, so this is something that 
Like if there are questions about, my hope is that we'll have a forum set up soon where we can ask those questions and answer those questions. Uh, but also at the same time, uh, we will continually kind of be reflecting on these ideas and getting better at them.